What is happening, everyone? This is the experimental show. Ba boom. I'm uh I'm out here in Manchester right now. Staying with a buddy named Russ. Super cool. Everything's great. And this is a pretty cool video. I made a caterpillar here. You see Oliver in the background there. Uh, we had taught classes, so we got our name tags on. Or maybe we we're teaching classes after this. No, we taught them before. But here I am talking about kind of the size of it here. And you guys are going to see. We, we made one of these caterpillars. It was Michelle's idea back in the day. Probably like experimental number 20 or something like that. But I love the Italian style pinch bit up the bottom for the legs of the caterpillar. So I'm going to make a bigger one here. I wanted to feather, look at this, boom, pulling out the feather tool. I wanted to uh, put a really cool, we looked up some pictures of some caterpillars. I think I show them off on the show, but uh, do a feather kind of technique and put some bright colors on it and then put the legs on it uh, after the fact. So I'm doing some granny green on the body, super bright green. Michelle's gonna bring over a bit of like 100 coats of blue and then we're gonna spiral them onto the body. Once we get the blue spiraled on there, it's the feather technique. You guys know the feather technique. Michelle asked for like 100 coats on that with Michelle and I kind of made a joke while she was doing it. She didn't heat it in between layering the coats on there so she was just running in the color for a long time. But I don't know if you guys can notice the brand new hole we're using over here and how hot it is, I mean, the cameras obviously make everything look a little bit different, but that's like a white heat right there. Normally you got like a nice orange, what's up Oliver? A nice uh, orange glow to it, but that's like white heat. The thing's freaking hot. So for her, that was fine. And blue's a super soft color, got it super hot. I wanted to let this stiffen up a little bit. That's gonna be the size, it's gonna be all solid. Solid little caterpillar and She's going to bring over. Michelle knows how to, for not blowing glass often. I mean, obviously, she used to do it all the time. But just for jumping in the shop when she jumps in the shop, there's the inchworm inching along. Um, she does a great job bringing over bits, lining it up, and very open to, for knowing what she's doing. Most glass blowers would have an ego, you know, and she's pretty good about, really good about keeping things uh, tame and just kind of listening to the way that uh, the gaffer wants it. But there's a really nice spiral chair. A little more glass than we needed, but better that way than the other way. And just gonna get it ripping hot, which doesn't take too long. You're gonna see the feather technique. I brought the giant uh, feather tool over. I didn't know what was gonna be better. Here's Michelle pulling out some extra cane. Normally you don't use, I mean, this is just a fun experiment a little bit and to see the color change, especially with that blue. But, uh, we would never use, that's cool how it fell down, it was still a little, still a little warm. Um, you don't use much cane with just frit on there. If you're gonna use cane, it's gonna be stretched out so far, perhaps heated up really hot with a torch. You're not gonna want something that just has a couple layers of color on the outside. You definitely want to uh, make sure that's bar color. So that was just kind of cool. We left that there. Those guys in the back, I don't know if you noticed, picking up a goblet from this past weekend we did as a demonstration. Super cool. But there's the feather on the opposite side. And blue's a great color to be doing that feather with because of how soft it is. This was a cool move I did at the last moment here. I lay down some color on the table. Oh yeah. So that uh, while that feathered texture on the outside still there I can roll it across one time and it'll just pick up the green dots on the blue so you got a green body with the blue feather and then spots of that same green on top of it see how the camera looks pretty good there you can see the texture but that turned out super sweet um, then I think I asked Michelle to grab the phone and let me take a look at what a caterpillar looks like because I know it's just long and kind of slimy looking and whatnot, but I didn't know what the head looked like or how it bent or what the deal was with the tail, and there really is no tail. But we got all the color squished in there, and then I'm gonna put a bunch of necklines into it and kind of give it a little bit of a bend for the head so it's kind of inching along. 
feather looks good. I'm just thinking about it there. She's holding up the camera or holding up the uh, caterpillar for me. You could see it right there. The legs I realized after the fact I probably could have done out of white, but that burns out really easy too. And that bit needs to be super hot when Michelle brings it over. So I was kind of like, let's just start with clear and we'll go from there. But here's the neckline. This is actually a new challenge that we added to the uh, the glass blowers challenge of the beginning of the Tuesday gathering point shows. So, well, Chris wanted to do that one. That's where we're gonna see who can do the most balls down the pipe like that while keeping it straight and while keeping it lined up and keeping it hot and not cutting into the jacks. It's a pretty cool challenge to just uh, the dexterity of lining them all up even and making sure it's not flopping and getting off center. Here I was purposefully letting it flop off a little bit so that I could just let it fold to one side and kind of get the head bend like it was inchworming along. Tighten them up a little bit. It's a nice name tag we got on there. Abby's been really hooking us up for classes. If you guys haven't met Abby yet, uh, I did see today Bess actually uh, made a video of the gallery and was showing some things off for happy hour. Actually, it was a couple days ago. It was Thursday night. And I think Abby was featured in that one. She's super nice. She's doing a great job. If you guys come take a class, you'll very likely be meeting her. She'll be introducing you to the studio and getting you set up. But she's making us some sweet name tags. So here's the sweet move I was talking about. You got to cut it and get it thin enough. Just like that. And you got to do it while it's hot. I didn't want it to stick there, but I pulled it back. And so you gotta, I gotta get all the way down before that thin piece of glass cools down. And Michelle's kind of walking the dog, as it's called, coming along with me and giving me the right amount of thickness, the right amount of slack. See how low she is now to the piece? Boom, perfect amount of heat. So that's one runner of pinch bits, looking good. And then we're gonna do number two. Same thing, a little, again, a little more glass than we needed, but it's definitely better that way than vice versa. Touch to the side. Same thing. And you can see Michelle commented too, you see the wax coming off, you see those things smoking. There's not supposed to be wax coming off the tweezers, but for that scenario and if we were doing a production line of these I honestly would take a pair of waxy tweezers and a pair of tweezers and add wax to them so that they won't stick because by the time with that thickness of glass the fifth or sixth uh, curl over that you did pinch bit it would totally start to stick to the tweezers it's using gravity to give him his business we're gonna make sure, so this will be coming out on Sunday. We're gonna make sure Tuesday that we show off the final piece because it looks pretty cool right now, but when you see the bright green and you see the, uh, the blue, it makes a huge difference. Two little eye spots, and we're talking about the face of a caterpillar. I don't know how many people have looked a caterpillar in the eyes before, but uh, I haven't and I had no idea what it was supposed to look like. So we zoomed in on the picture and it was just like, it had a little like pincher set. I don't know if they're pinchers either though. I don't think caterpillars pinch anything. They just kind of slime along and I guess they bite leaves, don't they? Maybe. Um, but there was the plan there. I snipped it, pulled him out to the side a little bit and he's got some little pinchers. That'll be nice to show off in the actual when it's finished on the annealer reveal. So then for torch in the bottom, we wanted to uh, polish it pretty nice, smooth it out pretty good. We're still getting used to working over uh, on this other side of the shop with the new hole. So we're gonna kind of figure out where the torch goes and Michelle's looking at all the equipment. I started heating this, we were gonna do it like a slug so that we kind of slime it off so that the color is all connected. There's not just like a, a void of color on his behind. So this took a couple heats out of the furnace, get them pretty floppy. And then Michelle was there to catch it as he fell off the pipe. I think uh, 
Heather cut out one of the heats there, so we really had to build it up. It was a pretty thick piece. Little tail. Little snip. You can see the angle I snipped that at, so it wasn't a point. Kind of went all the way around it. Kind of like the diamonds. Could use the diamonds on it for sure. Got rid of the paddle mark. Little pat pat. And Michelle's gonna take it away. It's gonna look good with the bright colors. I saw it before I went out of town. She's excited about it. <laughs> Into the box. Not that box. That box. Number three is actually filled with snakes right now, getting prepared for the snake release this summer. I think everyone's gonna love that. It turned out amazing. But it's a thumbs up right there, folks. Thanks for watching it. I'll be talking to you guys on Tuesday on the show and appreciate you all. Thanks to our VIPs. And you guys are the best. Have an amazing week. We'll talk to you soon.